Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Our liturgical season is drawing to a close, and we have spent months learning about the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, and we should prepare for it. We should gather up the lamp oil. We should multiply the talents that have been given to us. We should prepare because it is coming. And Jesus spent many, many times talking about what the kingdom of God was and how to prepare for it. And this was very interesting to the Jews at the time. They listened very carefully because they wanted this new kingdom. They were expecting the glorious and mighty power of Israel to return. They were expecting the new kingdom that was very much like the old kingdom, when Israel had taken its prominence in the area and in the world under King David. It was a time of economic prosperity. It was a time of unity for Israel and for political power. They could walk into a battle and win. And so there was peace. This was the kingdom that the Jews were hoping for. And they were ready because the Romans were putting more and more pressure on them. And it was becoming intolerable. And they kept saying, God, where are you? Bring us back to the King David times, to the kingdom that was. But then Jesus died. So what kind of kingdom was that then? But the early Christians picked up that theme of the kingdom is coming. It is about to be here. Get ready. Prepare. Don't fall asleep. The kingdom is coming. Prepare. And it was this expectation that had morphed from a political power into more of a power of justice, but it was still this feeling of judgment so that when Jesus came back, the Christians would be judged as the righteous one, and they too would be sitting on the right-hand side of Jesus. It was that kind of roll up your sleeve and say, go get on Jesus. We're behind you. We'll be the righteous one behind you, and in the judgment, we'll be the sheep, and we'll be in, we'll be in, in the power. You can see this in Paul's letter when he spoke and he picked up this theme because Paul's letters were the ones of the, early, the earliest writings. When Paul wrote to the Ephesians and said, God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. <coughs> and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. He has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Doesn't that sound like the king, the military man, the king of kings? This Sunday is named the Christ the King Sunday. And you see so many wonderful and beautiful stained glass windows that have the king on the throne, that is Jesus. And he's holding his sword, and he's holding the balance of the judgment. But in between Paul's letter to the Ephesians and the writing down of the Gospels, there was a shift in the Christian understanding of the kingdom. Because the early Christians believed that the kingdom of God was imminent. But then the Romans came in and destroyed Jerusalem. There was nothing left there. And the coming of Jesus had not come. So by the time that we had a recorded letter, we had the recorded gospel of Matthew, the kingdom has changed into an idea of justice. The old kingdom was very much like what some of our brethren and sisters believe in the Christian faith, that, that the kingdom is about to come. So go up to the mountaintop 
And we see it over and over now in our writings and in our movies. This is what it's going to be like, the final judgment. But Matthew tells a different story. Matthew tells a story of a king that was always looking at the fringes. A king that would walk into a crowd and be looking at the ones on the sides. Jesus would say, love you, but who else is here on the side that we have not included enough? Those are the ones that I have come, the tax collectors and the judges and the lawyers. Those are the ones that I want to bring into my kingdom. And that is the king that I will be. It is a matter of justice and a matter of compassion. But this word justice is different. It is not let's throw everybody into jail or send them into hell. It is more going back to Ezekiel's translation of justice, which is mesfat, which is the old Hebrew, which means we will, as believers and receivers from God, react as if we have been given a gift from God. That is the word meaning justice. It is our response to the gift of God. And so as justice, the new kingdom will be, how is it that you will respond to the gift of God? And what is this gift? This gift is the power and the freedom to be members of the new kingdom. It is a sense of power to go out, to gather in. Somehow or another, as humans, we are not given automatically to reach out to others. We want to gather in. And yet, if you watch the Episcopal Church these days, we are living into this new kind of kingdom because we are saying, whatever you believe, whatever you think, you are welcome here, whether you're gay or straight, whether you're old or young, whether you're rich or poor, you are welcome here. And if you're homeless, we will go to you. If you're hungry, we will go to you. It is the way that the Episcopal Church has been living into the kingdom. We are opening our doors so that you are welcome here and we are called out. We are living into the kingdom. We are acting in a way of compassion and justice. We are living into the kingdom. At Thanksgiving, you have all these food drives and you see the pitiful pictures of the, pitch, you know, the homeless and the hungry. And that is all well and good. But the greatest gift we can give to anyone is to notice them and to bring them in. You remember Mitch Snyder? He was a homeless advocate in the 70s and early 80s. And he spent many, many years advocating for the homeless until at one point he said, I need to feel like I'm homeless too. So he went out and literally lived on the street for a year. And his greatest thing, his greatest message when he came back was, you have no idea how many people ignored me when I was living on the street. People would not even see me. They would look through me. The greatest gift that we can give other people is to notice them is to look them in their eye and say, hi. So the people who are waiting at the stoplights with these poor pitiful signs, I don't give them money, but I look them in the eye and say, hi. When I was working downtown with the homeless and the hungry, 
We were providing food. We were providing clothes. But the greatest gift that we gave was to say, I see you. And I see you. I notice you. And I know the spirit of God that's in you. As we are workers in the kingdom, as Jesus would like, we are on a search team to go out and see people on the fringes and bring them in. Because our job is, frankly, to put the judgment out of business. So that when the judgment comes, when Jesus is standing there and saying, did you see the homeless? That was me. Did you see the hungry? That was me. When we are gathered together as the sheep and the goats, it's Jesus' desire to have us all sheep and have no goats left in the world. That is, for God, the kingdom of God. That is the kingdom that Jesus wants. That is the kingdom that Jesus is the king of. Amen. Amen.